Welcome everybody. This is the Conway Select Board meeting of December 20th, 2021. Um, call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda is approving the minutes of December 6th. They look good to me. Me too. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. The warrants. We have an accounts payable warrant. Um, I didn't get the dollar amounts in there. 501, 517, and 93 cents. 501, 517, and 93 cents. Okay, so 501 is the... No, that's, that's the accounts payable warrant. Okay. Yeah. Payroll and warrant is 115,210 and 74 cents. And the payroll deduction warrant is 29,070 and go. 69 cents. Okay, so um, the motion to approve those warrants. Uh, so moved. Okay, a second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Meetings attended by select board members. Robert. Well, we had a conservation commission meeting, uh, and that's about it. Okay. Ah, uh, well, I had a uh, Union Thirty Eight negotiations meeting, and just now returned from a frontier regional school teachers and IAs negotiating meeting, which featured a special guest appearance by our town administrator, Veronique, as an observer. Mm -hmm. And as an observer with the unanimous consent of the union and the administration. Um, and that was pretty much the highlight of the evening, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But they did bring in pizza and salad at the end, so I was able to grab it slice of pizza for the way home. So that was my highlight. Yeah. Um, but basically the tone and tenor of that union is just something that is nice to check in on. They actually thank, they thank you for your courteous and you know, whatever. They, they're just nice people. So we like, we like our frontier union. Um, and just like right off the bat, before you even begin negotiations, you, you can just see that they're people that want to reach agreement with you. And it's just a nice feeling. So, um, uh, so that's it. Um, public comments, anybody? I see Janet Che's fingers on her mouse. That... Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, old business. I don't see any new business. Um, discuss and, and vote on approving joining a regional mass in motion grant application. Veronique, why don't you tell us about this? Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so this was brought to us um, through the FERCOG, and they had asked us if um, Conway was interested in signing on. Um, so it's um, involving us in, let's see, advocate, um, well, I'm sorry, that's talking about what it's done before. Uh, you caught me off guard here, Phil. Um, let me see. They want to apply for this funding, um, which will maximize the impact of regional age-friendly Franklin County North Quab initiative. Um, they, you know, by identifying age-friendly practices and projects to implement at the town level, um, working with other towns and finding um, funding to support these. So what they were asking for was a letter of support from the town um, to join in on this application. And, and I'll just echo that, uh, you know, I did look at all that. And um, the, first of all, it doesn't cost the town anything right. now or downstream. And um, the only thing that it can possibly do is help us. So um, for that reason, I'm in favor of it. Uh, so, um, and it's geared towards seniors. So um, I'm gonna make a motion to approve joining the regional mass in motion grant application that FERCOG has put together for a number of towns. No, second it. All in favor? Aye. I, me too, unanimous. Um, the next item, discuss and vote to approve the Forest and Trails grant application to the Massachusetts Cultural Council. 
I thought it was the cultural alliance, but it doesn't matter. So just to get, so I did find out about all this too. And I'll, rather than ask Ronnie, I'll just give my take on it. Um, so our forest and trails committee put together a Deb Donaldson and um, uh, Suzanne Artemis, um, they, they put together a really nice application for just at a cost of $500 to do an educational component to the Fournier Forest. And with the sixth graders doing signage and teachers involved and, and every, and so it, it's, it's, a, it's a great program. The only thing, you know, and this, what, what came up out of this though, is that uh, when, when we have new committees or any committee and they're doing grant applications, which we want them to do, it, we need to just really, um, they need to know in advance that the grant applications that they're doing are on behalf of the town, that they're now town, part of town government. So the grant applications can no longer have someone's residential address as the place to send the check to and things like that. And, and that it has to be processed through town offices and by the town treasurer and the town accountant and all that, the payments, I mean. So, so we, we, are, we do need them to make a revision to their excellent um, uh, grant application, just to, so that it follows the bylaw and the state law that says it's the town applying for it and not individual people that are on committees as part of town government. So with that qualification, um, I'm making a motion to approve after the fact their grant application with those revisions that need to be made. So does that make sense? Yeah, and I'll okay. second your motion. All right, all in favor? Aye. <clears throat> okay. And we're still <coughs> doing this with Mary Wigmore again. So I thought that was wonderful too. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so the next item is discussing and voting to approve the town administrator's request for a public safety building working group. So we're now calling the old garage, the public safety building, which is a big, a big improvement in nomen nom uh, nomenclature for the old garage. Um, so Veronique, you wanna tell us about that since it's your request? Certainly. Um, so this came out of a discussion that we had with the uh, highway fire police and ambulance departments um, just to discuss how the building was going to be used once the highway moves out. And out of that discussion, um, it came um, a proposal for the layout, you know, which bays were going to be used for which equipment. Um, and I have some of this in my in my update for you, but there was a discussion of the potential to perhaps put an office for um, police, fire and ambulance, uh, one office for each department in the back of um, three of the bays and creating perhaps a hallway um, that was accessible so the public could get in there, um, you know, as, as part of a, a possible uh, renovation for the building. Um, so out of that discussion, it seemed that perhaps we should just keep meeting as a working group to move forward on ideas about what's the best use for that building and moving forward. Um, I have to say, I would be really interested in this because it would get um, make it so that the public could easily access um, offices for the fire, police, and ambulance, and you know we could work to try to make it um, make sure it was ADA um, compliant. So I just thought it was interesting um, and, and a good idea for us to just sit down and have a group of people that kept talking about what are the best uses and how we move forward, where we get funding, that sort of thing. And, and I like the idea of just our, you know, fire chief, our highway boss and our police chief just sitting down and discussing things like this. It's a good, that's a good way to go. So would it mean they would move out of the second floor of the town office? Yes, and that would be huge. I mean, because, you know, both the, the fire and police are up there. It's, a, it's an awful staircase. Um, yeah. So to be able to have the public go to this other building and just actually access an office there, I think would be huge if we can make it work. So, um, so I, you know, and they were all agreeable to being put on a working group and, you know, um, seeing, seeing what the potential is and maybe trying to figure out how much it would cost and, 
Um, yeah. Chris Chris Herman was there. He had he had a wonderful um, you know um, draft sort of mock up of how it would all look, and so I'm I'm actually rather excited about the potential. Great. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, all right. So we don't, um, we're going to vote to approve. We're going to make a motion to approve the creation of a public safety building working group. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Great. Um, oh, De so De Deb, Deb, we. Thank you. When Deb comes on, just want to let her know that we already approved De deb we already approved um uh after the fact your grant application with congratulations for its excellent ideas and the way it was written thank you um i i i, I want to apologize for doing that up front and no don't there we have it um um i have a quick question so sure. wednesday we're talking about uh, another grant it's called the Community Forest Stewardship Grant Program. Right. Um, do you want us to ask you first? Do you want us to draw up what we're thinking about and then come to you? How do you want to do this? That option B sounds like the way to go to me, but um, I'm just one person. I don't know what everybody else thinks. I, I just want to do it correctly here. So. Well, yeah. Is there a real time crunch or do we um, do it two weeks from now? We haven't, we're, we're talking on Wednesday whether or not to do it. Um, it. It will take us at least a couple of weeks probably to pull it together as to what we were, our ideas are. I think we're probably looking in the ballpark of around $5,000 on this grant. Starting to talk real money. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> to pull this together. So, yeah. you know, so, I could come it, back. If if they decide they want to go for it, we could be back in a couple of weeks. Great. And, and you know, and as you're pulling it together, these types of things, a lot of times, there you have choices to make within that grant application, and um, it's it's okay to bring. You know, you don't have to have everything all decided. We can talk about it too, and you can get feedback. Okay. Although that's not required, but sometimes it can be helpful just to talk about it with people. So uh, we're people. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we'll be back to you when when we decide. Then I guess. And Great. Thank you, Deb. Great. Thank you. All righty. Bye. We'll see you. So, which brings us to our wonderful finance committee, or what's left of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're th we're two or three people here actually, right? I think Rihanna's yes. here. Yes. I'm here. I think Roy Cohn will certainly be joining. Tom Donovan calls in. He doesn't have his new computers, so we, we might be four, but we're the mighty force. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, this was scheduled at six thirty, so do you, they they have time yet. Yep. And and uh, yeah, but the other our other item is not ready till seven o'clock, right? Do you want to do there? your your uh, yeah. update, town administrator? Attorney? Sure. Sure. So um, I wanted to let you know that I have done the final submitted for the final payment um, through the CARES Act. So and that was the money that we got last year to deal with the COVID emergency. The total that Conway spent, we were we were able to spend up to 166,000 we actually spent a total of $134,189.77 on COVID related expenses from March of 2020 through October of 2021. Most of those funds were spent on personal protective equipment for both the town and the grammar school with some of it for all the contact tracing that the FERCOG has been doing for us all these many months. Um, the next item was a public safety building that we've already discussed. Um, so the ARPA working group met on the 9th. I and, forgot about that. Yep. Yeah, and we discussed the possibility of using some of those ARPA funds to obtain the, um, you know, at home rapid COVID tests uh, to be distributed through the town office and the town hall. 
Now, um, I, folks may have heard that there are some coming from the state. Unfortunately, Conway's not on the list. Um, so I am looking into purchasing through the state contract on combines, but I don't know how quickly they're going to get here. I'll try to get them as fast as I can because I know it, it won't be before the holidays, but even after the holidays, it would be nice to have access to those tests. And since we seem to be going into a season, having them on hand, I think would be a good idea. And we know that that's an approved expense because that's what the state's spending the ARPA funds on. So that shouldn't be a difficult. Um, uh, anyway, um, and actually, well, yeah. Um, I've heard that, that like masks, you know, two years ago, they've become in very short supply, very hard to get now. They are, they are. And I'm hoping that even though, because um, all the stores are sold out right now, I've seen it on the news, you can't get a hold of any right now because everybody wants to test before going, you know, out for the holidays. Um, but, and I'm hoping that, I know that the state contract opens up another contract for these in January, um, which won't necessarily be all that timely for us. So I'm hoping I can get on a different contract ahead of time and get, and get some in here. Um, um, I have a quick question on that. Can oh. I? That's a, um, your voice is just a little bit garbled. Are you talking about purchasing more masks? No, the, the at home, the rapid tests for COVID. Oh, okay. Okay, fine. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. I got to sit up straight. No, well, <laughs> um, no and, and, and I did, you know, I, I, went, I was just at CVS and they had tests right at the checkout counter and I know one of the members of the ARPA committee is Nelson um, Shiflitton, and he uh, and he did a thorough search of all of the area places, and he came out with Walmart actually having the best selection and the best prices. Hmm. Um, so, and we were talking as a committee of recommending the initial purchase of a hundred of them, if because the kit the, if they if they're under ten dollars each and they contain two tests in in a kit, um, that's hmm. that seems like a good initial way because the, the thing that I saw was that the state combines thing isn't going to be delivering them until mid-January. So um, it'll get us started till then and, and and we can offer them for free to residents, which is a good thing for the holidays. So yeah. Yep. And we've talked about the um, the um, well so there was a meeting with Forest and Trails Committee, um, met with representatives from Mass Audubon and the New England Forestry to discuss the possibility of just reworking the current town's forest management plans, which are excellent, but they wanted, they have a new format that will include more climate change issues. And they say, you know, it, it wouldn't cost us anything, but they want to shift it over into a new format that includes these items that will then allow the town to apply for different grants going forward. So that we just had a discussion about that, but we don't even know what the new format is or what it would look like yet. So there's really not much to report other than we had an initial meeting. Um, I did meet with the school superintendent and the four town kind of administrators. And we just discussed things like um, ARPA funding and capital requests by the schools, as well as COVID updates, which are obviously kind of changing daily. Um, Conway has sent in the settlement participation forms for both the distributors and the J&J &J settlements. So we'll see if we get some money back um, for those two uh, programs. And then I am happy to say I've completed the second of my MCPPO um, the Massachusetts Certified um, Purchasing Procurement official um, class on, it was on design and construction contracting. And then I have the third and final class, which starts in February. This one will be a little better because it won't take me away from the office. It's done um, at my own pace over nine weeks. So, and then that will be the last one and then I'll be all done and certified. So, yeah. Congratulations to you, Veronique, for scoring a nine. <laughs> Out of a hundred, yeah. Oh, we wow. We won't dwell on the two that you got wrong. <laughs> there was only one question, Phil. There were two points each. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Brutal. All right. Brutal. Yeah. <laughs> so that was it. Thanks. Thank you. Um. All right. Very good. 
And um, yeah, so, wow, we actually have a few minutes to tell a joke or two, I suppose. Would, um, I don't know if it would be helpful. Do you want me to call up on the screen? I did send everybody the last year's budget. We could at least- Yeah, sure. Pop it up there. Oh, I've said that That's now. Budget yeah. schedule, you, right. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I've said that. Let me make sure that I can do my screen sharing properly. <laughs> um, oh, I, I want to pop in just with another brief comment. When we got, I think some people may be having trouble with the link because it, it, it got, it, it wasn't direct. I got, only got into this meeting by going through the town website and looking on the calendar and then um, clicking that link on the calendar because what I was sent before was, was a, the agenda, it sort of looked like a copy and paste and I tried the Zoom link in there a couple of times and it didn't work. So if you're expecting a little later on some other folks, you know, on the on the last issue, maybe yeah. um, Louise or somebody could send out that direct link. Or yes, and I apologize. That was my that was my mess up. Um, the town has two accounts, and somehow I called up the wrong one. Oh, so okay, because other Joe and et cetera, and so, yeah, are yeah. coming in, and you don't want to miss right. Okay. Yeah. All right, let me see if I can actually do this. Look, maybe I can. All right. Can everybody see that? Mm, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> okay. So this was this was basically last year's. Um, the only thing I changed was here, you know, since we know the date of town meeting. But um, let's see. Can I? I can. There. That's, I think that's about as big as I can make it. So, but we are we are waiting for an additional finance committee member to join us before we can really mm -hmm. talk about this, I suppose. Um, yeah, so I can I can stop sharing and I just want to make sure that if yep. that that we have it. So. <laughs> okay. So, but, uh, but I'll go ahead and, and tell a joke. So I got my vaccine booster on last Wednesday and I, and I, told, I told a joke to the person giving me the shot and she said it was the best vaccine joke that she heard the whole time. <laughs> and the, so the joke was, uh, last time I got a shot, I at least got a slice of lime with it. So, <laughs> to, so there you go, that's my joke. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> vaccine vaccine humor is like a specialized thing, you know. It doesn't. It's kind of kind of rare to come up with. Kind of hard to come up with a vaccine joke. You should have Barb post that. <laughs> I'm pestering Roy to see if he can join. <clears throat> okay. So, Alan, does your other member have the call in? information or the right link that uh, tom donovan yes he should but uh he's always kind of a free agent if he joins or not <laughs> i did speak with him about a week and a half ago and he said he was going to okay but that might be the wrong link because of my mess up so i and i don't mm -hmm. think i had his email mm -hmm. he would he would be pretty he would probably take the initiative to call me but <laughs> i'm going to call roy cohen first let, let me uh let me sign off here for a moment hold on Oh, 
Well, I'm going to have to remember in the future to schedule that we go through things a little bit more quickly than I think. <laughs> no, the, the minute you schedule that, though, it's not going to be true. It's just, it's <laughs> not because we scheduled it this way that this has happened. Yeah, it's that balance between making sure it happens in time and not making yeah. people wait forever. So. Yeah. <sighs> Roy's plugging in right now. He's on his way. Oh, good. <laughs> so we'll have a quorum. Ah, good evening, Roy. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. We can hear you, Roy, <laughs> barely. But Small <yeah>. miracle. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hi. Hi, Roy. Hey, Bob. Hi. All right. Alan, if you want to call your committee to order, we can get started. Okay. I call the finance committee meeting to order with the select board. All right. So we're... We're here, this is our first meeting for the fiscal year 23 budget process. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, um, we, you know, one of the things that I, that I wanted to just, I, I know we talked about this last year, sort of ways to improve our process. And that's what I'm always interested in. How can we do this better and more efficiently in whatever. So to me, the things that, that that from years past that I, I, I've always been left with the same thing that number one, I want to do the schools as late as possible because their information and their numbers are always the last to come out. And number two, I wanted to do the highway department much later than we've been doing it because when we do the highway budget, there's always been so many unknowns and incompletes and we're always skipping over things that if we just give it more time, we would have had better answers. So that, those are the two things that just to me, I wanted to move down the list, um, but I, I don't, that's just me. That's just my opinion. I'm just one person. So um, that's kind of where I'd like to start the discussion is our schedule and, and how we can make our schedule better. Well, uh, my, my thoughts uh, are, you know, the capital budget items, the departments that have the largest capital budget items really should go towards the end. And um, there are the smaller, the smaller budget should really go first, right? Because usually the easiest. So I, I'm on board with you. I, I agree. And the biggest ones, the highway department between the operating budget and the capital budget, and of course, the school committee, school committees, I should say, really should go on the end with maybe the exception being the uh, Franklin Technical High School, given that we're only about 9% of their budget anyway, typically. Right, but that, that is another one that when that they do us first, like we're in the top three or four of all the 30 towns that they go to. And uh -huh. when they show up, they're just, I don't know, I don't know, here's our projection. And we vote on a whole bunch of unknowns. If yeah. we had that, if we had that a month later, um, we'd have better information from them too. Yeah. They get off easy, they get off easy with us. Could we hold that jointly with a, with a few other towns like in, in our district? I mean, we have Deerfield, we have Swately, we have Sunderland. I mean, collectively then we'd be like uh, probably about a I third of their budget. Warren calling from Maryland here in Boston with regards we, to- We probably would be able to- uh, Allen, if you could please- Probably have a little more respect, you know what I mean? We're only 9%, um, we're kind of like the tail wagging the dog. You know? you, um, yeah, I mean, that's a, yeah. that's a good idea, I know. I know Deerfield wants to do more and more joint meetings with us, or at least one select board member does. Mm -hmm. um, All right. It, it kind of makes sense with that because uh, we're only otherwise historically about 9% of, of the budget. And for us, to, we're probably a pain in the rear end. <laughs> and we could do it by Zoom in, in a joint meeting. So that would be yeah. convenient for all of us. 
I'm yeah. sure the Franklin technical people would be happy, very happy to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we can, we can make a few phone calls and see if we can make that happen, but thank you. Um, so, so I mean, we, you know, I, 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 I thought that the, the bud to, to me every year, the departmental budget that there's a few of them that are, um, so I don't want to say easy, but they're non-controversial and, um, and it, it's a good place to start, like, like Alan said, with, with, with those, the police, the, um, historical commission, things like that, that just yep. are always the same. The finance committee. Finance committee. There you go. There you go. It, um, so, I, and, and, you know, so that's, so it, do, do we, do we want to just pull up that schedule and reorder it and. It's fine with me, right. Roy and, and Rihanna. Have you any input? I mean, I welcome I, your uh, suggestions. I I totally agree. I have no uh, no issue with it at all. Uh, me too. It, it, <laughs> I mean, in general, the later we look at these budgets, <laughs> you could say that about the non-controversial ones as well, because the more of the current fiscal year spend that's booked. Um, the more, you know, the more accuracy we actually have. That said, you know, you, it's still, in my, in my mind, it still comes early. <laughs> yeah, um, it, you know. January is really almost too early to do any of it, but yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, I, but, but I think it's still, we still have a bylaw or a law that says we're supposed to do it all by the end of January. Um, it's, I know that's true. I know that's true of the school committees. The school committee has to put together a budget by the end of January by state law. And it's just an absolute work of guesswork and fiction. Exactly. Um, yeah. So um, we do the best we can. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Veronique, when I look at your list, I don't see the level of detail to, you know, to move things around. Uh, you know, I don't see like where ambulance is, for example. Well, it's public Pu safety. Public safety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, the fire department, the ambulance, and the uh, and police. I mean, we can we can do that usually in one 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 evening. I mean, they're yeah, not... yeah, absolutely. So sorry, which three are those? Public safety, oh, January eleventh. Last year we did that, uh, Veronique. We can do all that in one. Probably do uh, three. You know, fire, right. ambulance, and okay. and uh, police in one one pre one evening. Do you want to then so that you want that to be the first one? That would yeah. be good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I do want to mention that this year we're going to need to approve a new budget because we're going to have to um, create one for the transfer station, splitting it out of the board of health budget yeah that just that just makes the uh town administrator and and select board budget more lengthy that's all <laughs> so the so uh okay so that's going to be rolled into town administration yeah yep all right okay so that that'll that'll probably take up uh that's three different presentations actually so that, that's another evening yeah that is an evening So where could highway be moved to? Well, just down. Uh, yeah, I mean, f February 8th, the capital request, since the capital request is them in the grammar school. That's that's a start, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I see that. Yeah. And, and the grammar school already has submitted an informal capital request, just to give us a heads up. Um, and but what they're trying to do is put as much of the ARPA money into it as they can. So um, most of their capital requests, I believe we now anticipate it being able to be funded through ARPA, which is great. It takes it off of the town assessments for this year, maybe next year, too, since we're allowed to uh, what up to three years to spend all that. Yeah, 2024. Yes. Yeah. This requires the discipline to not spend it on everything else, but yeah. Okay. Um, so, so right. sorry, wait, just so you're aware, these dates were last year, so they're not. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Okay, so what are we switching to February then? The highway to, to go on the same night as the capital request. Oh, okay. And then what about uh, Chief Baker? He has a, a capital request. He'll go there too because he's requesting we start putting away money for a new uh, fire rescue truck. Yeah, and that, so that's, yeah, that would go on the same, the same night. I mean, there's also, you know, the, you could also ask him to do it on his regular budget presentation, but I, I think it's good to separate them. Yeah, I think it is. I agree. That's a big ask. I mean, we're, yeah. we're talking like uh, $600,000 or something total, right? Over what, four or five years? Yeah, I thought it was more like over 10 years, but I could be wrong. Oh, all right. Okay. It was 2028, I think. And oh, okay. 2028. So we're, we're talking like six years. All right. Fire rescue. What what is that truck? That's the oldest fire and fire piece of a fire apparatus. And I see. he's on his a, a real schedule. They get they get every year out of it that they're supposed to. Um, um, the uh, so the, the the school budget. So just to give you all a heads up, um, the school has on the books for this year six retirements. Um, and, and, uh, I think half of them were actually from last year, but the people didn't file the paperwork in time. So, um, the, the, and, and as you know, or as you may remember, we have a, uh, unfortunately a very generous, um, sick pay buyback provision in our union contract yeah. and was able to change that for all new hires starting two years ago, three years ago, but mm. it, um, we still have 17 more years for the old hires to process yeah. through that. Yeah. Um, so, so with six retirement, the, the estimated budget hit just on six retirements is something like $120,000. Yeah, I would think. And, and so before we even have a single other budget number, we know that our grammar school budget request this year will be a double digit increase from last year, yeah. percentage wise. And, and we're in union contract negotiations right now. So that number will get added to yeah. whatever we have already, but it already looks like a pretty rough grammar school budget just from our retirements. So um, something to keep in mind. There's so, so we're talking like the end of February, uh, Phil, to uh, do a, a like preliminary presentation for the Conway grammar school. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, it's really March till they have anything resembling final number. I think, um, yeah. you know, but it, it, it takes even long. We always have to wait until the final budget is signed until every, the, all the joint committees are all reported and the governor signs it. And then that time period after the governor signs it, because a lot of what we depend on is that final uh, transportation reimbursement number. And that's like the very last number that the state publishes. Yep. It's what they make up all the budget shortfalls on whatever. So, right. and the difference between getting a 50% reimbursement and an 80% reimbursement is massive for us. Yep. So, so you want to wait till like the first Monday in March and then we can, we can make a, a final mm -hmm. pre budget presentation by the end of March for this Conway grammar school. Is that what you're thinking? Phil? I think that that's the way it's been working out anyway. Um, yep. No matter what, no matter what the dates say. Yep. So, uh, you might as well have the schedule reflect the reality. Yeah, and then the Frontier Regional School. What about uh, if you want to wait till early March for, for that too? What do you suggest? Yeah, I mean that they're both of those schools, right? It's the, March is the public budget presentation and vote, so that's when we know what the numbers are. So yeah. All right. um, so can I just interject uh, for a second? Yeah. Uh, since this budget that you're looking at this the schedule was based on a much earlier town meeting. Um, and I actually have a, a request if it's okay, because I have not sent out the budget request to the departments. What I'm doing right now is putting together a large spreadsheet where all of the, um, all the budgets can be linked. So that if we, and, and I'm, when I send out the budget request, I'm gonna have a second column that has 
you know, what um, a level funded and an increase amount. And if it's in there already, then we can just change the amount, the percentage, and then it'll change all the formulas and it'll all link to um, one spreadsheet that shows all the departments together in one spreadsheet with, you know, and we can change it kind of on the fly more easily, but I haven't gotten them all done yet. So because we have a little bit of extra time because June 4th is a little bit later, I'm wondering what is the first date you all want to start with these uh, meetings? Like I'd like to give them a month. So, I mean, today's already the 20th. So if I get this done this week or beginning next week, you know, well, how about, uh, that's ML sorry. King weekend is uh, that's always a long. How about the Monday after ML King weekend? I don't know what uh, they did on the count of Tuesday. Be, yeah, the Tuesday. The Tuesday. So yeah, last year that was January nineteenth. I don't know what this year is. Somewhere, somewhere similar to that. Third week of January. So Monday the 17th is Martin Luther King weekend. So that would be the 18th. There okay. You go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, and, and, and the only one that really, you know, the first one up is the one that would have the 30 days. The next one up would have 37 days, whatever. Yeah. It so the 18th, we'd start with public safety. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And, and, and honestly, what, what I hope to hear like more definite numbers from like most of our departments this time around is what the, what the year to date spend is that my recollection is that in the past, um, you know, that we've, we've considered departmental budgets without having um, that question answered. So, and I- and Well, I'd Mike, like to... every month is good to send, he's send, good at sending out the uh, yep. budget summaries. And I do pay attention to those, especially during budget season, to see, you know, how close people are or not. Yeah. Yeah. So, so very do you think you've gotten enough uh, input to <laughs> at this. <laughs> um, I'm happy to. Um, honestly, I'm wondering if we could still push it back a little bit. We're only pushing it back two weeks, but maybe, maybe we'd rather not. So, if you look at the next date, so if we did January twenty fourth, January twenty fourth. So, um, yeah. Oh, if you want, yeah, if you want to do the twenty fourth, and that would be public safety. Okay. okay, that's fine. Yeah. So and, the only thing that I would ask that you, that you, you know, that this whole process involves lots and lots of statutory deadlines and, you know, but there's separate ones for the schools, there's separate ones for the warrant, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we do want to make sure that we don't run afoul of law. Right. So, but it, I mean, if you want to start on the 18th, we can do that. Um, well, I'm, I don't, I don't know if it's, if, if we're fine doing it on the 20th, um, fourth, then let's do it on the twenty fourth. It's, but um, you know, if you want to get back to us, Veronica, in, in terms of how how Chief Baker, you know, uh, Chief uh, Womet and uh, and Emma and Gemma rather are uh, coming along with their budgets. I mean, sometimes they're they're pretty well along already without even having to submit. They already have an idea. Yeah, and they may they may well be. So that that's yeah. really fine. Um, I'm just trying to remember when town meeting was originally set for last year because it got pushed back for a couple yeah. of months, if I remember. Yeah. Well, if you want to find out when we have to have our budget, I mean, maybe this year we don't get a pass, but with, with this uh, spike, who knows? Maybe the state will change. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So, um, all right. So we'll start with public safety and then the town administration. <laughs> I think so. And that includes Board of Health. And um, mm -hmm. and then I'm thinking after that, we can do the Board of Assessors, Town Clerk, the uh, Treasurer. I mean, they, we can probably handle those three in one night. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, okay. 
Mm-hmm. So, so the schedule, the schedule is, is one thing that I wanted to tinker with and I'm glad that we are. Um, the, another thing is that, um, uh, so that, you know, we, town departments, there's some more than others that the budget categories mean more than it for other departments. And there, there are some departments that sort of have created a culture now where, um, the, the number reflected in the budget is not ref, is not reflective of the reality that it, it is expected and and so that my, my I, I'd like to just sort of change the town culture or move move everybody towards uh, something that where the number in the budget is what is expected to be spent on that category and that if they're not spent on that category then they're returned to the town um, or else the town meeting is requested to change permission to spend um, on something that, that there's t- t- too much of, uh, you know, savings on one category and budget heads thinking or department heads thinking, okay, I can spend this on anything else that in my department. And that it's really, that's not best practices. Best practices is this category is for this item if you, you know, if, if this item is, uh, if, you, if there is savings from this item, then that money is supposed to come back to the town or there's supposed to be a request to town meeting to change permission for that, what that money is being spent for. That there's just too much of this um, informal, my budget can cover it, I can do that kind of a thing where it shouldn't be, there's, they shouldn't be able to say that. You mean the so, line, item, line items, Phil? If, if yeah, yeah. Has yeah. A- for, for the, the the line the line items have to mean more than what yeah. they do mean for for every department. I agree, and uh, it, there's no town statute about. Uh, I mean, the school committee has full full license to change line items with or without town meeting or uh, select board or finance committee. Right, and the, the departments same- within the town budget. I don't think actually if there's a significant line item change. Maybe, maybe Mike Acella can help us with that, but. Yeah, uh, I- I have not, this is the first I've heard of a, uh, a strict requirement. I mean, I can understand from a budgetary control point of view, uh, it's something one would want to strive towards, but right. um, I, at least all the years that I've been on the finance committee, you know, we've, you know, we've always at the end of the fiscal year anyway, we've always, you know, moved, okay movements from one, you know, and, yeah. And, and I so and, and I agree that there does need to be some flexibility. We we cannot predict the severity of the winter storm season, and yeah. there has to be some flexibility to, you know, be able to accommodate things like that. Yeah. But well, the uh, highway department has the uh, the right the statutory right to um, change the uh, winter budget if there's an emergency. Correct. With or without town meeting. Correct. Correct. Um, yeah. But 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 I think it's sort of a. a there's a difference between Roy, like your concern that you expressed and sort of this, this nobody's ever asked me about what's in that line item before. It never mattered to anybody before. Um, it's just always been that number and things, things like the, the responses that we've gotten in the past have just been um, sort of contrary to best practices. And I, I just n- not in sort of any hard, fast, rigid kind of requirement, but just as a culture, we want to be more moving more towards the, the you know town meeting has the last word and what the line items are and it's what it you know that's the way it's supposed to work you know, the, the only thing is that the town meeting never really gets to see the line items yeah uh, that's you it. Know, sometimes they're buried uh, tom would bury some of them in the uh you know in the town report or i shouldn't say bury he would expand them in the uh in the report right but, um uh you know the at least at least in my sort of semi you know because i do the it it's a kind of a pseudo department it's not a real department but uh there are line items there that are more a matter of um more for an, for analysis than anything else i guess you would say um but uh and it does help in you know i, I it does help in logically building the budget you know um, so those those um, 
the line detail, you know, like take the highway department, I'm sure you could have, you could have a lot more line, you know, sub, I don't know what you want to call these detail, detail lines could get to be pretty crazy, I think. Um, so I'm just, I'm just saying, I think it can be a good tool. Um, but people have to know how to use it, I think, also. So whatever, you know, because you got to build it with some logic to it, you know? Yeah. And you and you can't all, you can't just depend on the accountant, on Mike to, to sort of figure it out, you know? So that's my, that's just my random thoughts. And this is Janet. Can I add just a two cents worth as a, um, uh, uh, I do have, have um, studied and worked extensively in budget ma management professionally in a lot of organizations. Uh, and I manage right now the very small open space committee budget. I think you wanna be really careful mm -hmm. about micromanaging and uh, paranoia about moving from one li line item to another. Uh, for example, in our small open space committee budget, well, we're, we're paying for mowing the walking trail in the town meadow. And some of that depends on how fast the grass grows. And so are, am I gonna have to go through hoops because, oh, <laughs> we, we, we need one more mowing? The grass or, grew too fast. <laughs> or, or, you know, no, you know, we didn't spend that. It's, it's just an, a, a warning to be uh, careful about what additional, you know, how fixed you are on small line items. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so so to, to, to me, there's like a, a, a gigantic difference between that concern that what you just said and the concern that the like a statement that we might get from other department or conceivably that, oh, this line item only came in at less than half of anticipated. So that means I get to spend that other half on whatever projects, you know, uh, 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 yeah. fall, you know, you whatever. Know, we used to in the profession there were, uh, uh, the shift was for items that was called program budgeting, so that it was for however you define a particular program. And if somebody paid a little more for a consultant versus supplies, that was all for the goal of a particular program. So if you're looking at revisions, you may wanna sort of focus that way. Well, that's or, the larger issues, whatever they are. All right. Here, here's my my experience, and, I, and I'm I'm not just talking IT. I'm talking about with the town budgets. Uh, most of the budgets um, come in pretty lean, um, typically. Hey, Joe. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> um, and so, um, you know, I I. I think what Janet is saying, it's kind of, you're looking at a sort of a higher level line item or something. Um, so I, I don't know. It's, I, I think that the line items are fine. You could look at something and say, well, why did it go over? Oh, well, that's a good reason. And why are you using it for this other line item? Because we miscalculated or whatever, you know, COVID came along and, you know, blew us out of the water or any any one of a number of things. So I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making any argument. I think they're good yeah. guides. You can construct it so it's a good guideline and maybe uh, uh, forces you to adhere to some kind of uh, discipline. Um, and, and, and my concern really isn't on the items, on the line items that go over. My concern is the line items that every year are significantly under. And, and that seem to be placeholders to create, um, uh, you know, sp spending opportunities in other um, areas. And so, and I just wanted just a greater sense of like truth in budgeting and um, a greater sense that, you know, it's the town, town meeting is the town legislator and they're supposed to have the final say in what we spend, not what we spend and it, I'd like to sort of restore that to some extent, or at least be moving in that direction. Which brings me to like a, another thing about budgeting and the way we do it. And that is to move towards best practices in town meeting. We 
we stuff so much into our one annual town meeting and the best practice is to split these up and, and to have two scheduled annual town meetings. The best practice is to have the first one being the summer one being the ordinary budget and the second one to be a fall one and that it would be capital requests and bylaw changes and other incidentals. And, um, I, you know, I, I think that it, we, we do ourselves a disservice by having three, four hour, five hour June town meetings um, and that we're better off with two, two and a half hour meetings than one five hour meeting. So, and, and that we, we almost always have good reason to have a fall meeting but everybody's afraid to ask for it because historically those groups that have petitioned for it have been punished at town meeting for petitioning. And, and, you know, it's an extra thousand dollars that the town has to spend to put one on. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, that's, it's just, when you look at all the trainings and all the books and everything else that, that it is the officially declared best practice to do it that way. So uh Phil, are there are there towns actually doing it that way? Most, really? most, most do it that way. Mm -hmm. There's, um, there was there was only a handful of towns left in Franklin County that just have the one. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that, that that's a different topic from uh, the schedule. I mean, we, yeah. it's well, a good topic it, though. It <laughs> it is a different <laughs> it is a different topic, but it would also give us more breathing space to. Yeah to do what we do so yeah well maybe veronique if you want to poll query amongst the uh well this year we have the uh you know ron sweet is going to with two different larger large ticket items right three hundred thousand dollars for a scraper one hundred twenty five thousand dollars for i think an excavator right chief baker is going for the uh fire truck you know to start capital budgeting for that and uh you know, I guess the highway department too, with road paving, if you want to, you know, take on more debt to pave additional stretches of, of Conway roads. But I mean, uh, if there maybe you want to, and Veronica as part of your budgeting also in terms of capital budgeting, see what requests there, because if there's only a couple of items, maybe we could put it in a town meeting, but if there's more, then you may make sense to have a special town meeting. I did actually send out the capital request early this year. <laughs> Um, and those are the ones that came back, the ones that you have. So okay. uh, I don't have any else. Um, All right. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. There was one from Chief Lumet um, right. that I haven't sent out, but that was only 7,500, if I remember correctly. So. Okay. You know, one thought is, you know, I, I think it's really good to have a, I think a pre-town meeting for uh, people like Ron Sweet, Chief Baker, to go over their their capital budget items and have a, a chat. And I think that's a good idea too. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I second that. Yeah. And, you know, that's another item that, that that's another thing that, you know, we've always left it up to volunteers to put that together and to run it. I've always thought that we should have a small budget line item for that. A couple hundred bucks, whatever. Yep. Just, yep. And, um, but we don't. So I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to at some point sort of make that an official thing instead of just a complete, Please, you wonderful volunteers, will you do it again this year? You know, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we've covered a lot. Well, good. We haven't good. decided much. We've covered a lot. <laughs> no, I mean, that's part of it is just talking about it, talking about it first is important. And just, you know. Yes. Um, and, and I I know you do, too, Alan. You look at this stuff and every year you think, how can we make this better? So that's what. Oh, yeah. Well, I like the idea of not having too many budget revisions. Because I start pulling my hair out when uh, we yeah. get to the, about the sixth revision, we start tripping over ourselves. Which one? To which one are we referring? Yeah. And yeah. I like the idea of pushing the uh, capital budgets towards towards the end of the process, as well as the uh, Frontier Regional School, of course, the Conway Grammar School, and then to also have a joint presentation, if they're willing, of the Franklin County Technical School with uh, maybe the other three towns that are part of the Union Thirty Eight School District. Yeah. Yep. Sounds like a path forward. So, so is it clear as mud for you, Veronica? Has this been helpful or not? <laughs> no, that's great. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it together and I'll put in all the, the dates for the statutory requirements and, and send that out to you. Okay.
Okay. So are we talking about a town meeting again this year, like in early June? Maybe the state can give us some guidance as to when they want our final uh, town meeting budget approval. I mean, last year they gave us reprieve, but maybe not this year. I don't know. Have you any idea, Veronique, what, what the Department of Revenue is asking for? All right. Well, maybe you can call the Department of Local Services and find out. Tell them that out here, the uh, we, we need we need extra time because we're still we're virtually meeting and it just takes extra time. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, um, we is that, was that enough for tonight? Great. I'm good. I mean, so <laughs> so Veronique's going to put together a revised schedule. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that could be good. Very right, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Happy holidays. I'll see you. everyone next year. I don't see you before. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Happy <laughs> holidays, everybody. Take care. Thank Happy you. holidays. Thank, you. Well. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Everyone, best health. Yeah. yeah. Bye, -bye. Yeah. Bye. Good night. Good night. So, which, which brings us to our seven o'clock executive session for our favorite topic, sixty nine Main Street. Um. So, um. Go ahead, Veronique. You wanted to say something. I just didn't know if you wanted to finish out the rest of the agenda, if there was anything you wanted to finish. Yeah. Um, mail. Was there anything in mail? Any select board comments, Bob? Nope. Um, okay. So with, with that, uh, we're going to entertain a motion to go into executive session and from executive session um, directly uh, and the open meeting portion of the, uh, <laughs> at the same time we're ending the executive session. So um, we will, at, at the beginning of it, we're, go we're going to be entering executive session for um, reason number six, to consider the purchase exchange lease or value of real estate at 69 Main Street if this chair declares that an open meeting has a detrimental effect, may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body being the town of Conway and the chair does so declare. So, so uh, I'll second that motion. And with that, we will go into executive session upon a roll call vote, um, Bob. So I'll vote yes. aye. I vote aye. And Bob, is there, are you all alone? Does, can anybody hear yes, you? No, I have my earbuds in so no and, one can hear. And I myself am all alone, except for my dog, who is a reliable non-witness. Um, and uh, so with that, we will go into executive session and end this recording, and we will emerge from executive session and terminate the open meeting as well. <laughs>